I need to mute myself here. So that it may take a second because I need to make sure that we don't have the background noise from both. Okay. All right. We are live and we are just trying to make sure that everything is working well. And hi, everybody. This is Joe Massaro with uh, Joe Massaro Ministries and Yahweh Sisterhood Book Club. And today, so excited to have Karen Whiting with us. Um, this has been a long time coming. I've uh, been trying to um, connect with you for months. And due to my own health issues and surgery, we've had to move it along. So, so happy to see you and welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you so much, Joe. And it's. Can you hear me? Yes. Oops, hold on, because I am not hearing you. So oh. give me a second. All right. Let's just see here. Can you hear oh, me now? Oh, there we go. Okay. Right. Let's just see here. Can you hear me now? All right. There now I'm going to mute one of them. So hold on. I'm going to mute one of them. And there we go that should do it okay okay <laughs> always got to get that muting in or it um just messes everything up so welcome it's so good to see you good to see you too joe I am just going to change our view if I can. Oops, don't want to do that. And well, it's not going to let me. So we'll just keep it right there. So anyway, welcome, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for the challenges of social media, as we all know. Um, we've got a lot to discuss today. Um, I do have a little bio information about you, but if you would like to at any time jump in and share with everybody a little bit about who you are. And um, first of all, I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Where are you? I am in Florida near the Space Center, Space Coast. Oh my gosh, wow. I am hoping to get down there sometime this year. Uh, so you are an international speaker. Oh my gosh, former television host, award-winning author, author of more than, is it 30 books or are there more? More than 30. It, yeah, well, I kind of thought there were. When it gets over 35 in another year, I'll I'll change the numbers. <laughs> wow. So these books are for women, children, families, and the military. And yeah. you have a heart to help people and families thrive. I love that. And build strong, wholesome bonds. As a Coast Guard wife, you have lived in many states, almost always near the water. I love that. You have personal experience the trauma of natural disasters in various homes that include category four hurricanes, lightning strikes, an earthquake. Derecho, is that, did I pronounce it correct? I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, but it is a sideways tornado. Yes, I, yep, and spontaneous combustible fires. Oh my God, you are a widow, my uh, condolences mother of five, including two rocket scientists and a grandmother. That is just <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. So there's a whole bunch of other things you can read about her. You're going to want to go to her website because there is so much. I was telling her before we started, there is just so much on her website that I found wonderful. And, you know, she can talk about that more, but it is KarenWhiting.com. We will po post it. It will be with this interview so you can find it. Um, but tell us a little bit about if somebody, before we get into the book, if somebody goes to your website, what are some of the things they're going to find? They'll find a mom quiz. And if you're a mom, it's really nice because it helps you go to the area you most want some tips and other information about. And you'll get like a about seven different emails, it's a sequence, you don't get them every day in a row, that will give you lots of ideas, lots of things to do, and that will help in the area that your quiz shows you should go to. Mm -hmm. There's 
blog posts that you can link into. There is just a little bit about what's happening. And there's times when I'll put up what a new release is coming, which I have one coming soon. So I'll be changing that up this week, I think. I'm just, they're waiting on the final cover design. And then they'll print. So that's been the delay for that a little bit. Yeah, those things are other and arts and crafts, right? I saw well, arts and crafts. Yes, there are freebies that you can click on and get a lot of downloadable freebies, either as a writer or as a mom, where you want to get some arts and crafts and other things to do. And even if you end up in, there's different parts within that quiz where you could end up with more creativity and more arts and craft things. And, and once you do one, you can always choose to go to another of the email sequences in case you want more than just what your quiz brought you to. So that's always available then. I also have links to my different social media that I'm on. Uh, my ones that I'm on the most are Facebook and Pinterest, although Pinterest is sort of called a search engine more than a social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went on your Pinterest. I really loved it. And um, so I'm just starting on Pinterest. So uh, there's all kinds of different things to do. I went from 2,000 monthly views in December and decided to grow it. And it's at 21,000 monthly views as of today. That is just amazing. Just amazing. So people are out there searching for things in whatever area it may be. So I always tell people find one if you know if somebody says that, well, I don't do anything as an author. I haven't like done anything in social media. Start with one, get good with it, and you can move on to something else if you want to. Yes. 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 So um when did you I'm always interested in this when did you know you know you wanted to be to write to be an author you know for some people they wrote from the time they were young um you know for me that was not my story at all so maybe share us uh share a little bit about that journey I have never wanted to write but God <laughs> called me to it when I was raising my children and people kept saying oh you should write look at all the things you do with the children and I thought <laughs> I don't really want, I like creating things. I don't know that I want to write, but I went on a retreat and prayed and God gave me a vision. And the next day morning, someone gave me a painting of the vision, not knowing I'd had the vision. And I said, okay, Lord, I will give you five years. If nothing's published by then, I'll know I didn't hear you right. Within five years, I had contracts for five books. Wow. And all right, I'll just keep writing till you tell me to stop. And anytime things are slowing down, I think, well, maybe I'll be stopping and just do articles and then boom, I get other contracts. So I just keep on going. So you're not stopping at this point in time. That That is just awesome. I love that because for myself, it was not something that I ever found myself or wanted to do. It was just not a calling for me in my life, but God spoke to me. Not in that way, but you know, he spoke to me in just a very subtle way and it's been like three four years in the in the works right now and so um i'm real excited you know because when god is in the middle of it <laughs> you know that um you're heading in the right direction right but that direction may not always be so easy is it uh, not always. I, I He opened a lot of doors for me fairly quickly, really, mm -hmm. from doing little things for Sunday school take-homes and articles to books and keep them going. And I don't know where it'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it, though. So we're going to talk today about growing a peaceful heart and its devotions of faith, encouragement, and forgiveness for peacemakers, past, present, and future. Well, that's a beautiful title and subtitle. I know this for myself that, and you wrote this with Sarah Du Bois, by the way. I just wanted to mention that as well. But um, what is it like? Maybe you could share a little bit about what it's like to collaborate with another author. I know you've got something else in the works. Yes, and everyone is different. You know, I work with my daughter. I've worked with several co-authors and uh, this coming one. So I'm still working with Pam on a book that's about to release. And it's the fourth one in this series, Growing a Joyful Heart. And that's been interesting because just as she was starting to write, she ended up in the hospital and had to go into an induced coma, which she talks about in the book of having joy when she came out of that too. Mm -hmm. So that delayed her being able to do it. But God knew because the contract was actually pushed out uh, by a month by the publisher and not us. So that gave her that extra time. She wasn't sure she'd catch up. And I thought, well, I may have to do more, but 
Wow, she certainly put in her effort in all. And now we're working on things like uh, we have articles to do coming up. And one came up where the editor said, hey, which one of you wants to do it? And I said, well, what do you want to do? She says, oh, I'll do that one because she knew I had others that I was going to be doing. And, you know, we're just really sharing a lot as to doing these things together. We were together last summer, so we were able to get some photographs together and we will be together. Well, she's coming to my house on Sunday and we'll be in Orlando for the coming week. So that That'll be great. And we'll have her husband take more pictures. So So you're talking about Pam Farrell, by the way. We didn't mention her last name. Oh, right. Pam Farrell. You know, it's her 59th book. It's my like 34th. And so it's very interesting that we're doing this together and we're both veterans, but we both came up with different problems that happened along the way. I had more problems with my feet and legs, which wasn't too hard for sitting down and typing. But (laughs) you're right. We're both all better and doing great. And that's nice. So it's fun. But yeah, we are as we go into this, she's starting on a book with her husband and we're launching and working uh, next week. We'll both be doing interviews, but she'll be doing interviews on one of her other books. And I'll be doing interviews on the peaceful heart. And we'll be setting up some interviews for the joyful book for when it comes out. We will have one that will be together for that interview. I definitely want to do that with you guys. So if we can make that work, that would be wonderful. Yes, that would be lots of fun. I know Pam that too. She's three hours off from me, but I'm sure we can work that out. Absolutely. Zoom works so well. (laughs) So maybe you could share a little bit. You people, you can see the book, you know, right behind um, the side of my picture here, but um, maybe share a little bit about how this book developed and, um, why you thought it was so important to write this. Yeah, it started back with the first one that I didn't quite realize would become a series growing a mother's heart because within that, I realized there's still a lot of unrest and not having peace among mothers. And it doesn't stop when they grow up because then you worry about the grandchildren or are they staying in the faith or not staying in the faith? And I thought, you know, they, they just really need, and a lot of people need, it doesn't have to be just for women, a book on developing that peaceful heart so that through all those storms, through all those ups and downs in life, you can have peace. And it really helps your children when they see you in the face of a disaster like I've had or loss of my spouse, that they still see you being calm at peace and trusting God. Yeah, and what I loved is that this is divided into three sections, I believe it is. I'm going to need my glasses for this one. (laughs) Oh, the first section is inner peace, because we need that first. And then peace in relationships, because that can flow easier once we have peace. And then being peacemakers, because once we're at peace in a lot of directions in our life, it's so much easier to bring peace to others. Absolutely. Um, You know, I know for myself that, you know, peace is something, you know, when we all have our stories, we all have, you know, our journeys in life. And there were times when I so before I knew what it was to have a relationship with Jesus. um, And even in that, you know, as you're growing and maturing, it doesn't mean that, you know, life is great all the time and that, uh, you don't have struggles. And we were just talking about health issues and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the loss of your spouse as we go a little bit further, but um, how, maybe there is a section, uh, maybe you could explain what people might see in, because it's devotional and what they might find in the week and what, um, and maybe okay. read a section. Okay. Each week begins with a prayer and some little input from children. Those are our peacemakers of the future and their thoughts about peace, which can be (laughs) pretty funny, (laughs) sometimes very astute. Then we have three contemporary devotions in there from contemporary moms, as well as one devotion from a historic person and a devotion from the Bible and and those it's not always contemporary moms they're contemporary people they could be men or women that we're reading about that have peace mm. and how they came about having more peace in their life mm. that, that yeah it's just because we don't always just wake up every day and we're peaceful <laughs> no. <laughs> doesn't immediately bring us peace you know, we, We have to choose and make that effort to have peace in spite of the circumstances we are living through. In spite of, yes. Why don't you go ahead and 
when you are ready. Oh yeah, let me read one. Uh, this is a happy one on peace. It's with my husband and daughter. And the, it starts with scripture of, from Acts 17, 26. He made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. Rebecca's dad showed her a prism and how she could see the colors within it when light passed through. She said, Daddy, we're freeing the colors. A prism is a piece of glass in a triangular shape. When light passes through the glass, it slows down and then speeds up as it leaves the glass. When the light hits the glass at an angle, it bends or refracts. The colors within light travel at different speeds, and the prism helps split the light into those different colors. While light contains all the colors of the spectrum, prisms make, make great optical tools. A lighthouse is able to shine a beam to a far distance because its small light is surrounded by prisms that intensify and focus the light source. Jesus called himself the light of the world. In him are all colors, and through him all people of all colors were made. Love is what frees our hearts to love one another, no matter the skin color. Seeing others through the lens of faith helps us find the best and live in peace with our neighbors. When we remain close to Jesus, we can reflect light and like a prism, help show people the beauty within all the people God made. We can help people see and respect what's unseen. Respect includes being sensitive to the feelings of others. That means considering our words so that we might not say something hurtful. This includes understanding and celebrating different cultures. It also means to see people like God does by looking within a person to his or heart, her heart and not judging outward appearance. We free our hearts and relationships when we use Christ as our prison. And every day has a peace step. So today's peace step for that one is Find a new quality within each person you interact with each day. Now, some of them are much more story oriented. That's a uh, goes into a little bit more about what light's all about and what the prism is about. But it was just so joyful to hear Rebe Rebecca talk about how the prism freed those colors and how she started looking at things through a prism of God's eyes and perspective, I would say, in her lifetime, just because of that. And do we not need to do that every day? I know. Um, it's so easy sometimes to just look at someone and to, um, it's so, sometimes it's easy just to judge them. Um, and sometimes, you know, I always say you never know what that person is going through. And yeah. Great. And you sometimes understand more when you go through things and you think, wow, I didn't really understand that pro person's problem. I know after her, a, a huge category for hurricane that we had $99,000 of damage at our house, mm -hmm. and it was one of the worst to hit the States at that point, we realized that people driving couldn't even focus. They couldn't, they were in such trauma and sort of PTSD that they were living in that they were not able to focus on what was going on around them. And because of that, we had to be more careful as we drove. And our daughter was 16 at the time, and we didn't let her drive right then because it wasn't a good point for her to drive as an inexperienced driver around so many people who could not focus on their driving and look out for other people. Well, you know, as you're saying that, it reminds me of um, in 2007, I was in a severe car accident and um, I had a traumatic brain injury. Ah. And I, my brain felt like there was a tornado going on all the time and I was not able to really function and, you know, to drive or to do any of those things at that time. And, um, and PTSD, all of those things were going on in my life. And one day I had an encounter with God and I had some worship music on and um, I heard this voice, it was not audible, but he's, I heard it and it was, what can I give you my daughter? And I remember speaking these words, a heart for your people. And over the course of a year, that tornado that was you know, always going on in my head began to slowly diminish mm -hmm. yeah and, and I began to get back you know my ability to do everything that I do today right well it's it can be very hard with different times and yeah. some people 
you know, it, it can be devastating to them and take a longer time than other people. For me, I'd already been through a few natural disasters and grew up with hurricanes. So it wasn't as bad as my husband was away on Coast Guard orders. So I really had to be strong with the children. Sure. And, you know, during that night, I was reading the Bible and I'd pause and uh, pray. And I finally, in the wee hours of the morning, read Jesus calming the storm, prayed, and everything mm-hmm. stopped when I prayed for Jesus to just stop the storm. And after a couple of minutes, Michael piped up from the back of the closet and said, Mom, you should have read that one first. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. True, right? Get to the point, okay? <laughs> but we all laughed. And you know what? Laughter is such a release mm-hmm. when we not at peace. It really helps us. It gives off those happy endorphins we need and really makes a difference. Just like looking up to God. Sarah wrote one in this book where she and her husband were on a tourist area and they went into a Christmas shop when it basically indicated that you should um, live above because the, evidently uh, it, it read on a sign living above because the ice cream shop owner lived above the ice cream shop mm-hmm. and realized, you know that's what we should always do be living above look above where we are and yeah. it helps out so much more so there's just sometimes little things that can jog our mind to remember how can i have more peace Amen to that one. i'll tell you there are days when you are just like i need more just <laughs> give me more lord <laughs> yes. okay so let me let me ask you a few questions so individuals and families face struggles and challenges every day which we have talked about but they can still remain calm and have that inner peace and how have you been able to be at peace when the unexpected happens or when someone disrupts life yeah the best way is always to be prepared that i get up in the morning and ask god to renew my uh, heart and give me a steadfast spirit from Psalm 51:10, and to always know we just really have to trust God. It's it helps to talk through things. So when something happens, our family will start calling each other and talking about things so that we can sort of process that out. And that's a good thing to do too. And sometimes you have to know when I give it to God, I may have to let things hit rock bottom. We've had somebody in our life that we knew this person was going to hit rock bottom before they would seek a shelter for abuse Mm -hmm. and seek some other help. And now they're in a two-year program just of the last week that is a Christian program that's really going to help them because this person was adopted and just didn't listen to advice and would fall back on bad ways of doing things. And so we're really hopeful for this, but we knew we had to not stop bailing her out and start having her have to face that there is, a, you can bottom out and you then find some help. And so she's willing to get that help now. And we all need support at times in our lives, you know, and it may not, you know, maybe families are not always the best situation to uh, go to in times of support. Any suggestions for somebody who may say, well, I can't, I can't have those kind of conversations with my family. Right. And I, I know someone who's in a bad situation because she's, it's, there's a narcissist in her life that makes it difficult And so she has to do things quietly here and there. She has a few people and ways that she can communicate with them, but her biggest support has to be through the Lord. And sometimes we just have to face that and being at church where there's a safe place to be, to breathe easy at least once a week. And that's not easy, but she doesn't want to get, go for a divorce because of the children. And that happens a lot. I've seen women survive 20 or 30 years because of those situations. And we have to, if we make that choice, we have to really, really lean on God. Otherwise, yes, you can join a group of moms. You can, if you're a man, you can join a men's club or whatever and have people that you can talk to, but you've got to be willing to open up and talk and know that the people you're choosing to talk with are Christians and they will keep confidences. Yeah, yeah, so important because that that trust issue um, is is lots of times in growing up. I know trust was a big thing for me, and um, and then when you have somebody that you can really begin to talk to and know that what you're sharing is not going to be all over the you know city or with a whole bunch of people and. Um, it helps you to be able to open up and to be able to talk about the things that 
um, may not be so easy. I know for myself, uh, in my day, <laughs> in 1974, um, my son passed away the day before his second birthday. <sighs> in those days, you don't talk about it. You know, I grew up in an Italian Catholic family. In those days, you don't really talk about a lot of things. Um, and so I really didn't have a way of communicating a lot of how I felt. I was very quiet in, when I was growing up anyway, but um, but look what God has done. <laughs> but um, uh, you didn't talk about things. And so that just kept that pain and that hurt. And it, believe me, um, we're going to be celebrating his you know, his birthday is coming up in, in about um, a month and he would be 51 today, which I cannot even believe, um, but found ways to celebrate his life mm -hmm. uh, and to talk about him and uh, to do those kind of things. But if you don't have a way of doing that, it can just fester and grow and take the kind of roots that you really don't want them to take. That's right. And that is a very difficult thing for people when that happens. And now instead of just a funeral, we call we have a celebration of life. Yeah. That yeah. helps turn towards the good memories and leaning on that and realizing that we had that gift for the years. God allowed us to have that gift of life. Yeah. And yes. I have a friend and that's in uh, in the book on peace that Rhonda, her son, that was her child of joy. She has nine children, but it doesn't matter how many you have, that mm -hmm. she mourned him so heavily and so hard until God said to her, basically, would it have been better if he had never been born and you never had that joy you had with him? Mm -hmm. And she said, no, I, I would not have wanted to give that up. And thank you for that gift. And that's what helped her come out of that grief that she was in that was so deep and so hard was she realized that if he had given her that choice, she would have said, yes, I want him. Mm -hmm. I so agree. I so agree. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe we could shift a little bit. Um, it's hard to have peace in the midst of grief. And you have shared that your husband died um, and he died from breast cancer. Uh, what are some of the ways you've maintained inner peace during such a hard journey? But maybe you could tell us a little bit about your husband. Oh, well, he was, he and my dad were the two kindest men I knew. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my sons are very kind also, which is great because I see that him and them. So that's always very nice. My daughters are kind too, but you know, you sort of see some of your husband and your sons. And, you know, even as he was dying, a couple things happened. He, he had a vision before he died from God that said, it's not your time, but it's coming soon. That was several months before he did pass away. Wow. And, you know, so take that time to share with everyone. And he shared that vision and he shared what was happening and how God had walked with him in his life. And just, I mean, within a day or so of his dying, he said, I don't know if I did everything God wanted me to do. And zip, I just got something in my email that was from an old friend of his from like 30 years earlier that said, I know I should have told you this long ago, but I wanted you to know now because there won't be any more time that Years ago, your family had us over for, for dinner with some other Coast Guard guys who were in training, and you sat down at the dinner table and slipped your napkin onto your lap and just as easily slipped into a prayer from the heart. And he says, I could not get that prayer out of my mind for three weeks, and I finally started praying with my family, and it changed our lives. Oh, my gosh. I just got the chills. <laughs> wow. And that I said, how many kind things have you done in your life and just naturally being you that touch lives and that's what God wanted you to do with your life. You know, I, I often, you know, say this and I know I don't always live up to this, but, you know, it is not just, um, you know, going to church on Sundays and those kind of things, you know, but God is looking for us to be, you know, his hands, his feet, the words that come out of our mouth. And I know that at times, I'm not happy with some of the words that come out of my mouth. <laughs> and, um, um, but it is our character, you know, the character of Jesus, what people are looking at. Yes. Yes. And I may not always have to say, oh, you need to go to church and, you know, read your Bible and all of that, you know, and believe me, those things come, but it is about just being who we are in Christ and showing that love. And like we were talking earlier, not discriminate against somebody because they may look different than me 
their, you know, even their belief may be different than me, but, you know, I'm not to judge anybody, you know, I am here to love people and, um, and to show that love that Jesus has for me, because I know this, my life was a mess, you know, when I was younger and, um, you know, I was married to somebody else when my son died. And I always say that after we got divorced, I was searching for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so God, one day, just, you know, my husband, my current husband, and I were married uh, 31 years this year. Um, we, you know, I met him at, a, we were both went back to school as returning adults, and I met him at an alumni function. And I'm so grateful to God that he put us together. And um, because, you know, you just don't know where life would have taken you if I did not have a, a Christian man in my life that yes. brought me back to, you know, to the life that I, I really needed to have for me and my children. Right. So often we try to control our lives, uh, but that's not God's plan. <laughs> <laughs> go and let God work. And there are times that we're not even sure who we're crying out to, but God hears us and he answers us and brings us to where we should be and with the right people. And that's what we have to trust and rely on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know peace is not always something that's easy to have and you get um, restless. And, you know, I know sleep for periods of time in my life were very difficult. They certainly have gotten better. Um, but take us through a sleepless night that you experienced. Well, when we realized we were getting orders to go to Miami and we were up in Connecticut in a quiet area, all I could think of was the drugs and everything that went on in Miami. So I really couldn't sleep. My husband was, judged. God will take care of us. But now I was up for about four or five hours just crying out to the Lord of would he protect my children? What could I do? And I finally, after all that time, had peace and felt God telling me it was going to be OK. And although they all had friends who went into drugs and other things, mine did not. They stayed steadfast to God and their faith. And I, I believe a lot of it was that night of prayer when I couldn't sleep that I, it just took that much time to give it over to the Lord. My husband had done it so much easier than I had, but I wrestle on those things and, and it's okay. God doesn't mind, you know, yeah. Jacob wrestled and, and there's a Job question things and we have to go through that, but we come to that point of peace and that's why I will pray until I have peace about something. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Um, so there's never too much kindness in the world. I know that um, it, we really have to look at that um, in our own lives and how we, like I was saying earlier, how we treat people and all the things that we do. Um, how does kindness foster peace? Kindness calms people down. Kindness inspires joy in them. And kindness makes a difference. When you're with a grumpy salesperson or somebody who's being grumpy towards something you're doing and you respond in kindness, it starts settling them down. I have a story in the book on peace of a friend of mine who was in a store and everybody, this cashier was having a very hard time and the person ahead of her wasn't being very kind. So she stopped and paused to be kind. And that cashier said, that's the first kind word I've had this week. And, you know, it just made a difference. And she noticed everyone behind her got kinder also at that moment. And we have to just a smile when you're passing someone can make a difference for them. Knowing that if somebody cuts off from you, you don't toot the horn and get all mad at them. But I just always say, God put that person there because they need someone to pray for them and they don't have anyone else right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pray as I drive. It was just a, a little thing from God saying, hey, pray. Yeah, you know, it brings to mind as you're saying that my husband and I were in a store a couple of weeks ago and there was a customer who was looking for something and he wasn't being, you know, he was a little agitated because the person behind the counter didn't come out to help him. And as we were there, we we're kind of just getting into this situation and she came over, she started the, the person working there, started raising her voice, which moved him up to a much higher level of agitation. And he ended up having to be taken out of the store. And I was, I was standing there, I was thinking more in a frame, but thinking, you know, if that person had just brought that, her level of voice down, 
-hmm. and maybe went out to help him, even if she couldn't find what he was looking for. I think that whole situation would have changed dramatically. Yes, and it can. I, I know that uh, I was in a store one time and this person cut me off that I didn't even realize it was a cashier, but she it was her off day. And I mean, she didn't just cut me off. She actually slammed her cart into the side of me. Mm -hmm. And my husband and my son saw this and it wasn't very good. And I, you know, I was very polite and kind about it. The next, ca the cashier, when I got to her, apologized. But I thought, yes, but if that had been my father who's in his 80s, it would have been so much worse. So I made a complaint to the customer service department, which actually they looked it up on the video. Mm -hmm. I was I had video and decided that person needed some anger management. But I did not react or scream or yell at her when she did it. I thought she's already kind of out of sorts. Yeah. And the best thing I can do is just let that go. If she'd asked me if she could get in front of me, I would have said yes. But she, I was already in line and she rammed her cart so she could then get in front of me. Wow. Very strange. Yeah. And so yeah. you never know. You never know where people are in their lives. Right. You don't. And you just have to sometimes say, okay, this person has a problem it doesn't matter if they go in front of me, but I did also think, but what about all these? This is a store that a lot of elderly people shop at. I applaud you for doing that because I think that it really does help in, in hopefully in the, the, the scheme of the store and how they handle situations. Um, I know that, um, you know, there are many situations like that. And I've often say, you know, we're really good at wearing masks. I know that I've worn masks in my lifetime. And um, so even in church, when you're coming in and saying hi to somebody and they're like, you know, how, how are you, you know, or you ask that question, oh, I'm great. But, you know, inside they may not be doing so well. So, or if somebody is angry, you know, there are reasons why. And so um, just, I, um, it's better to, it's not a battle. I often say that I'm going to fight today, you know, just let, right. it, let it go, do what you feel you need to do. And yeah. yeah. I and there are moments God will nudge us. I was at an event with college kids one time and this one young man came in and I said, how are you doing? He says, I'm okay. And I said, looked at him right in the eyes and said, how are you really doing? He sat down and talked to me for two hours. At the end of the time, he said, you know, I came in from just swimming, trying to get things out of me, but I actually came here and thought, if no one asks how I'm really doing, I'm going to go. Yeah. I had no idea that was going on or that I just used the words God told me to use and that it made a difference just being kind and willing to listen to him. Listen, that's what we fail to do lots of times. But listening is an act of kindness also. That's such a good point. It truly is. I love that. Um, so how do we make peace with the past or peace when God allowed something devastating to happen? Obviously, you lost your husband. Um, so many other things and lives happen. How do we do that? Yeah, you know, one of the things is to just start choosing joy and saying, this has happened, but God is going to use this or use me. And there's a lot that God used because of my husband during his lifetime. And since then, he's used me to do so many more books and reach out to so many people. But I always know, and even right beside me is a picture of my husband smiling, that yeah. Now, God has his timing and it's okay. But there's other times I look back at one of the people in the book on joy that's coming up, Thomas Goodwin, who was a missionary to China. What examples he had, one of them was that when he had a steward who was helping him but stole everything he had at that time, he just said, well, I'm going to just give this to God. I'm going to just choose joy. And he wrote a letter to a friend and saying, you know, he, he knows God would take care of it. That letter found its way to a great missionary, George Mueller, who had such a heart for Thomas. He started donating money to George. I mean, George did to Thomas. Over the years, he donated $10,000 to Thomas's ministry, who said, I would never have had this if I had not forgiven and just chosen joy at yeah. the time the person stole the little bit that I had with me from me. I just love that so much joy and having that gratitude. Um, yeah. That's not always easy to have. No, but when we can choose that God did this and we will get through it, but God will also use it for our good. Yes. Then 
changes everything and we can have peace saying god knew this was going to happen he knew hurricanes fires and everything else were going to happen for me even hail damage on the roof of the house i'm in and i got a new roof because of that uh it's not the way i would have wanted to do it but i didn't have to pay for it so that was good <laughs> you know and we always have that looking for that silver lining within the cloud that's hanging over us of whatever the struggle is Amen. so we know what you're currently working on. Is there anything else you want to share before we close? And I'm going to ask you to pray. Let me just say this. They'll go to karenwhiting.com. It'll be posted along with the video. Please check this out. This book is wonderful. I just love this devotional. Um, yep. And I'm looking forward to catching up on some of the other ones and uh, the new one coming out. Yeah, well, moms, do take that mom quiz. And otherwise... Um, I am also going to be doing a book for children on archaeology, Bible archaeology for kids, because today we're losing a lot of our children as they get older. They think science doesn't agree with the Bible and all sorts of things. And this book is to help counter that while they're still tweens, before they start leaving the church, to show them that Bible archaeology confirms the Bible, to also help with Bible literacy at that time. And so when that sort of thing comes out, and even now, there are uh, Bible archaeology filmmakers like Tim Mahoney that has go have gone in and said, you know, I had doubts and I wanted to do this, and I've checked things out. And you can see the artifacts and everything he has done to help confirm his faith. And these are the things we need to be talking about and sharing with other people as well as our children to help us defend that faith and to help us trust God more so that we can trust him to have peace in our heart selves. Amen to that. But I got to tell you, I'm like a kid with in history and I'm going to look for that book because <laughs> I want to see it as well. So, and I have watched some of those videos that you were talking about um, and I just love it. I just love to see um, things that show and confirm, you know, the Bible. And there is so much. I mean, all you have to do is look outside, okay, right. and know that there is a God. <laughs> and, and that we are breathing our bodies in itself, just right. how they are made. Confirming our faith and remembering all the blessings and all the prayer answers helps us maintain that peace. Amen. Amen. So be sure to get Growing a Peaceful Heart. Um, so excited that you were here. Why don't you close us out in prayer? Sure. Dear Lord, we thank us, you for all that you have done and all that you are changing inside of us and bringing us peace. And we ask that for anyone listening who's having a struggle right now or tomorrow may wake up to a new struggle, that you will give them peace and turn them to you immediately, that they will put their trust in you, not in their circumstances, not in wondering how am I ever going to get out of this, because we don't always have the solutions, but you do. And you know when we need to walk through something to grow, you know when you need to to give us a miracle because it's the right timing for that. And you know when you need us to just find the right people in our lives to mentor us and to help us go through these struggles. And we ask that you provide all that we need. And we thank you already for the provisions to bring us more peace in our daily life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to safe travels and enjoy your summer. And please tell Pam I said hello. And I hope to see you guys together when that book comes out. Thanks. Yeah, I will see her in a few days here. <laughs> God bless you guys. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Be sure to check out joemasaroministries.com as well. And we'll see you next time.